I know a lot of people who look at this bill and say, you know what, it's a climate bill or it's, uh, as to, you know, it's a tax bill or it's all sorts of things, but maybe not a, an inflation reduction bill. Or maybe at the margin it's up or down a little bit, but that's not really the purpose. Do you think that's fair? I don't. I think the fair characterization is that this bill is the most significant and consequential step that Congress and the president could take on the fiscal policy side to try to reduce price pressures in the economy while also providing consumers with some direct relief. I mean, let's talk about in practice what this bill will do. It will lower health care premiums for 13 million Americans starting here in just uh, a couple of months. It will make everyday items that people need to upgrade their homes or to commute to work, make them more affordable uh, by providing tax credits and rebates to them. It will lower the cost of prescription drug prices to end consumers, but also to the federal government, and it will lower the federal deficit. That's Those are the things that this bill will do. And I think that the fair assessment of that is that that is it's historic. Uh, it's taking on long, uh, long weight awaited right. issues that our country hasn't taken on like prescription drugs and like combating climate change. But it also is the most responsible thing that uh, that we could be doing on the fiscal policy side as we navigate through this economic right. transition. What do you think the implication of the, this 15 percent tax, corporate tax, will do in terms of R&D and some of the other things that some of the larger companies uh, that historically have tried to uh, benefit uh, from the tax breaks that they can get by investing in those things? Do you think you're going to see a reduction there? I, I don't, because I think you need to look at the the full imp impact of the the, fit, the fiscal policy that we're putting in place. And let's just step back for a second. With the chips and science bill that the president signed into law just a few weeks ago, and the Inflation Reduction Act that the president signed into law yesterday, we are making the most significant public investment in our own manufacturing capability, our own research and innovation capability as a nation, and providing long-term certainty, which is what investors and companies are looking for, long-term certainty that there are going to be incentives to invest here in the United States, build here in the United States, innovate here in the United States. And we are doing that it's in a not, generational it's not, way. It's, right. For a very specific industry, I'm just saying, broad, broadly speaking, if you're making over a billion dollars, whether you're going to actually shift in terms of how you think about R&D spend as a result of this, that, that in the broadest context, no, but, that's, but, that's the... But, but Andrew, it's not just it's not just one industry. Obviously, the the, the chips and science bill uh, has a dedicated focus on the semiconductor industry, but it also has the largest investment in broadly R and D and innovation across our economy uh, since we we took undertook the national right. effort to put a man on the moon. And if you look at the Inflation Reduction Act, the long term incentives right. across energy and transportation affect industries and sectors of our economy, which are quite broad, right. from healthcare to energy to transportation to semiconductors to our innovation and manufacturing base. And look, people said that it wasn't possible to see the kind of rebound in manufacturing employment and manufacturing investment that we are now living through right now, more than 600,000 manufacturing jobs created. People said that that wasn't uh, possible. These bills and the public incentives in this bill provide right. long-term certainty to invest across the board in our industrial base, not just in semiconductors.